And here comes the critical point. That which is objective, everything, every quality, every attribute whatsoever, is not I. I, in fact, am the pure witness, which is not objective, which never under any condition stands as an object before consciousness, but which is always subjective. I am this I or self, the pure Atman, always subjective, always impersonal, always the witness that is beyond insult or any other injury, which is calm and peaceful and abides in delight. When one has really achieved this conviction in his consciousness, the walls fall down and the breakthrough is accomplished. The delight of the Brahman flows upon him, and the wealth is so vast that it is beyond his conceiving. He has attained, he is a, knows himself to be beyond all the vicis vicissitudes of incarnate life that he is eternal, deathless, and above all change. He has arrived at the realization of Janana Yoga. He has attained knowledge in the true sense. And though thenceforth he may choose to deal with the domain of world affairs. Yet, he knows that he is no longer conditioned in his essential being by the factors operating in that world of affairs, however much they may affect or condition the organism through which he operates. He is freed at last. He stands at the threshold of nirvana and uh, the great reward is his. This is the culmination of the fourth yoga the possibility now stands before him of entering moksha or nirvana to be born no more to die no more to be truly free for many this is the ultimate culmination. But we have not yet completed the ascension above the fifth sheath. I realize that I need 
following the long future for the last ten years and has all his power. It is a wonderful example of someone who is caught in her sensuous being <laughs> and <laughs> attached to the lower manas. And yet I keep coming to you, I don't know <laughs> whether it's a spiritual joke. <laughs> <laughs> you want to ask something? Since uh, uh, we're not all familiar with your vocabulary, like Sadika is a student. Student, yes. But also, if you can elaborate on the term that you use as object subject to consciousness, the object of consciousness. Well, yes, in the organization of our ordinary consciousness, there is that which we call I, who is aware of that which is outside and beyond. The Shankara's term for all of that which is outside is the universe of objects whether it's the cosmos or the people in this room and the objects in this room, or even ideas are objects before consciousness. But I, who am aware of this, am not an object before consciousness. This organism, yes, is an object before consciousness, but not I. I am aware of the organism. I am aware of all, all qualities that I can enumerate whatsoever are objects before consciousness. Now at the final moment, when one has completed this analysis with full conviction, including the dissolution of the personal ego, there's a very subtle step that is the crucial step. It is not enough to say, I am Atman, even though that's a reflection of the truth. But the moment I have said Atman, I have objectified that which is subjective. So as though you start that sentence, I am sink back. Never finish it. And the wall may break down if you do it the right time. When you are prepared, it may take many years of preparation. The Buddhists say usually seven incarnations, but not necessarily that seven. That explains a lot. Hmm? <laughs> My first. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the tape, you mentioned the fifth level. Uh, a little louder, I don't At hear. At the end of the tape, you mentioned the fifth level. Oh, that is, uh, yes. I was going through the analysis of the koshas of Patanjali at this time, and there is the fifth kosha, which is the kosha of bliss. Um, and here I have some rather radical thoughts. I might even get into trouble with some yogis. There are those who feel that the ultimate goal is the state of bliss. 
And that they linger in it and refuse to have any part in the world or in the helping of others, but simply abide in bliss, waiting out their lives until they can hopefully abandon their bodies for the last time and retire into nirvana. Shankar says of Brahman these words, Brahman whose nature is bliss. And if you're familiar with Indian thought, Nature is the Shakti. In other words, it's the Shakti of Brahman that is bliss. And there is a transcendence of the state of bliss. I called it the eye indifference. Where one stands between bliss and suffering. The world condition being identified with suffering and can move either way. This is another step another and more advanced yoga. But that is not the yoga that I dealt with tonight. Is that the final step, or is there more than one more after? So far as I know, final. But I won't attempt to say there's nothing beyond what I know. Bye.